again uh, back this time with the, uh, the shear test uh, and uh, before I get started I just want to again emphasize the importance of having your safety glasses on at all times okay and as you saw probably in the other video I have to use my own glasses all right so what is a shear test basically in the shear test our objective is to get the maximum uh, load that will cause our specimen to shear off okay uh, we're gonna normally we're gonna use uh, four samples here I have three samples here I have the brass I have aluminum and then I have the steel this is this uh, 1018 steel again the same one that is used also in the tensile test in fact these are exactly the same materials that we use for the tensile test for the traded samples the uh, the standard traded samples so I'm going to just show you the test on the uh, the brass okay and uh, actually let me set it up for you and then I'll go on and show you the software again you probably by now hopefully you're familiar with the software and how it works okay so one thing I want to mention guys is that you know that you cannot be in the lab with sandals here right especially with the experiment like this this shield block is extremely heavy in fact you you should never pick it up uh, the lab technician will pick it up at the end of the experiment now these shield blocks are uh, made of cast iron and they are very expensive in fact they don't make them anymore so if you lose them you're done pretty much you have to go with a cheaper version of these so these are the original shear blocks that we've used for many many years and they're perfect for what we want to do and uh, as i said please do not pick them up just turn them if you want to you know place your specimen so what you want to do is first pick this uh, block here place it here you see how brittle these materials are so you place your sample underneath here these are by the way you have to do all your measurements all you need to do actually is to measure the diameter of this and that's all you need if i were you i would take actually the diameter at three places and take the average of that all right you want to place this guy here right and then since this is a quarter of inch you're going to put you see this is a quarter this this block actually handles a half inch uh one inch and quarter of inch so put it in the uh, uh quarter inch part and then try to tighten this off uh you don't want to make it too tight okay otherwise when the uh the material shears uh shears off it's tough to get it off so then make it you know symmetric and nice and straight okay now this one is going to move what you want to do is to bring this plate compression plate down of course this is after you know you establish the connection between the uh your instrument machine and the uh the computer actually i'm going to just try to touch make sure that this guy touches now you have a fine jog down too guys you see this this button here i can bring this down slowly and as soon as this touches it i'm going to stop because i just want to make sure that this guy doesn't rotate or fall we are ready we close this i'm gonna now move over here guys the program is called make 2500 shearing okay the compression once you bring that program pretty much you don't have to input anything i mean you could but normally we don't do that we measure all the diameters and we have an idea at what load this is going to fail or shear off the minute you see the load fails the after maybe 20 or 30 percent drop this the, the system will shut down or the testing will stop and then program will give you that maximum load and all you need for each sample is a maximum load this is relatively simple lab in terms of the hardware and very quick so you don't even have to name your sample you just click next uh, all right it, it wants me to call it something group two sample aluminum that's fine we keep going next 
just make sure that before you uh, do this, you make sure you calibrate. As always, we do a calibration. And that will zero everything down. But remember, this takes about 10, 20 seconds to go through this. All right. Calibrating, please wait, we'll wait, it's done. You're ready to go. Uh, just let me zero this two as well. Uh, okay, so there, there is a slight load on this, but that's not really important. So then we hit the start. I mean, just stand back and watch. So again, you'll see a linear relation between load and compression, deformation. And then this is going to level off at some point, meaning it has reached the plastic zone. And eventually it reaches a peak and the load will drop. Remember, we're doing the test on grass, so we could actually do some preliminary, preliminary uh, calculation to figure out at what load more or less this will happen. So you can see that it's you know leveling off now, it's in the plastic zone for sure, and it's going down now. Yeah. So what you want to do guys very carefully you open this and you want it jog this up. For the first time, you see actually that really sheared off. Usually, this doesn't happen. Look, it's sheared off in two places. Let me get the other sample off too. So normally, you don't see that. Uh, you would see something more like this, that this is gonna go down and this is gonna go down. So it's more like this, because uh, probably uh, this is a very crisp sample, I guess. So this happened. But anyways, that's uh, regardless, this is uh, what's going to happen. All right, so uh, you don't have to do any measurement at the end of this lab. Again, remember guys, you don't want to move this shear block. Then you can do another sample, do aluminum or steel and eventually plastic. And all you need to do here, let me bring you up here guys. You know, all you want to do is to look at your maximum load here. We did remove this specimen. All right. And we'll hit next. And the, uh, the load will be uh, there. I just, uh, let me go back. You see, this was the maximum load, 3,471 for brass. And that's the one that you want to record. Remember, as soon as the, uh, the load drops, the system will shut down, but it shows you the maximum load here, which is about 37, uh, 3,400. Okay? So that's it for this uh, experiment. the shield test, uh, some uh, theory, some background on it, and why do we have, what do we call this a double shear situation? So you saw in the, uh, the experiment, uh, the shear test, uh, that the plate, the compression plate is coming down. We have set our specimen in that shear block like this. So if you really look at this, uh, what will happen is that this will, so if we break this, like that, if this is the load here, you would have a shear load right here, of course, the same shear load here. So this is what we call the double shear. Just concentrate on the free body diagram of this middle piece. And this is known as the double shear situation. 
Why is it called a double shear? Because there are two shear loads here. Remember, V is called shear load. So if you just do an equilibrium equation, P is equal to 2V, where V is equal to P over 2. And then, of course, the definition of average shear stress is what? Shear load divided by what we call shear area. And you could see that the shear load is P over 2. And then what is the shear area, by the way? The shear area, if I kind of enlarge this for you, remember those samples? That's a quarter of an inch, and that's why you need to measure the diameter. So this is, I'm showing you this. This is the shear area, which is simply pi over 4 diameter squared, or pi over squared if you want to use the radius. Okay, so that will go here. And that will give you your average shear stress. Okay, so the load that you got from the experiment when you put it right here, and then you can calculate your experimental shear stress based on this equation, and then you could then compare it with the, uh, the published values of shear stress.